Hey everyone, welcome here. Glad you're here. Glad you can make it on this dreary Wednesday uh, today. Um, hopefully I have good news coming out to you shortly about uh, next week. We'll see. Um, but for now, we're, this is the way we're doing Bible study online. This YouTube video, then if you go down in the chat room, chats below, click the link. Uh, it'll take you to chats where you can uh, talk to talk to people, uh, talk about Bible study, but just about life as well. And then tonight at 7.30, we are going to be on a Zoom call. Uh, this isn't Bible study or anything like that. It's just a time where we can get together, hang out, uh, even if it's not in person, but it's at least something. So if you want that, those, then contact me or go to the Facebook page and you can find links for that. Uh, but for now, we're going to be in Judges 16 today. If you want to get your booklet, go ahead. Uh, we'll be referencing that. So Judges 16, uh, if you want to get your Bible, press pause now and do that. We're going to be talking about Samson. Uh, Samson's a very interesting character in the Bible. Uh, he's kind of like Batman of the superheroes. You know, you're not really sure if he's a good guy or if he's a bad guy, but you're kind of rooting for him anyway. So, but what we're going to learn today is that God does not shy away from, work, from working with imperfect people. And also that we as Christians know, should know that we're imperfect and we should humble ourselves before God. And so, without further ado, let's pray and we'll get into it. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you that we can learn more about you, even if it's not in person. And I pray that, yeah, you will challenge us and teach us something new today. Amen. And so Samson was a judge. Uh, what a judge was, was someone that basically ruled over Israel in place of a king. Uh, so they were kind of the mediators between God and God's people. And oftentimes these were people that weren't quite what you would expect. Uh, oh, and they also saved, a lot of the time saved Israel from their enemies. And a lot of the time these people weren't what you would expect from a hero. They were people like Gideon and people like Deborah who were just your kind of normal, run-of-the-mill people who weren't very special. That is not the case today. Today we are looking at Samson. Samson was gifted by God unnatural strength. And so, but that came with conditions, and those conditions weren't met by Samson. And we will find out more about that later. But as we read about Samson, we uh, run into this idea of God's will. And God's will is plainly laid out for us in the Bible. Or not plainly, I should say. But it's more or less laid out for us in the Bible. And we often don't take it as we should. Uh, or we reject doing it. We prefer to go our own way. And that's what Samson did a lot in his story. And so if you want to read all of Samson's story, uh, then go ahead to Judges. I believe it's a couple chapters long. Uh, four, chapters 14 to uh, 17, I believe. Or 17 to the chapters 14 to the end of 16, so go read about that. And so, Samson, as a judge, was not supposed to drink wine or beer. He wasn't supposed to cut his hair, and he wasn't supposed to touch dead bodies. Now, some of that was as being a judge, and some of that was being a an oath that he took, and some of that was God appearing to his father and mother to keep him under these conditions, so to speak. And so those are the, some of the things that he couldn't do. Drink wine or beer, cut his hair, or touch dead bodies. 
And so in this first section that we're going to look at, Judges 14, verses 8 and 9, uh, it talks about Samson touching a dead body. Uh, he had killed a lion, and bees came to that lion and made honey in the dead body. And Samson comes, and he sees that there's honey in the lion, and he scrapes it off, and he gives it to himself and his parents. Now, that automatically defiles him, because he touched a dead body. Even if it's an animal's body, it's still touching a dead body, which in Israelite tradition defiled you. And, which we talked about before, he wasn't supposed to do. And so, there he goes, rejecting God's will for his life. Next thing he does is he goes and he marries a woman that, who did not share the same faith as Israel. Someone from a different land, which, again, you weren't supposed to do if you were an Israelite. And so, against the will of his parents and the will of God, he marries this woman. So again, choosing his own way instead of God's way. He says, I want this woman, so I'm going to make her my wife, even though I shouldn't be doing that. And it's this kind of impulsive behavior that kind of shapes Samson's life. Uh, in his story, you find that he bet 30 men that he, they couldn't solve a riddle. Well, they may have cheated a little bit, but they solved the riddle. And so what Samson did is he went and killed 30 Philistines to make good on his bet. Because his bet was to give them 30 changes of clothes. And so he went and killed 30 people to get those 30 changes of clothes. Uh, next time he gets angry, he leaves, and, the f and his wife's father uh, thought he was gone. And so he gives his daughter to someone else to marry her. Well, Samson gets mad at the father, and he goes and he burns a field down. Just, you know, what you do. So he comes back, and the Philistines continued to just do this, and there was this pattern forming to the point where after the Philistines committed something against Samson, he went and he killed 1,000 men with the jawbone of a donkey. Kind of, kind of crazy, hey? you know, a thousand men with a jawbone of donkey. You don't think of a jawbone of a donkey being used as a lethal weapon, but in this case, it was, and that's just kind of what Samson did. He was an impulsive guy, and if people went against him, he acted impulsively. And so, these mighty acts that he keeps. Uh, doing with the strength that God gave him aren't to honor God, we find out. They aren't really God-honoring acts. Instead, they're kind of vindication acts, or revenge acts. Like, he was wronged, and so he goes and kills a thousand men. That doesn't seem like a very godly thing to do, but more of a revenge thing to do, right? And so, it's stuff like that that shaped his life, and eventually left him to his downfall and so when after this all he marries another woman Philistine woman again deliberately going against what God told Israel to do and he marries this girl now Delilah now it doesn't say whether this was a, a mutual love for one another because uh, that often didn't happen in Bible times but they were married and so what the Philistines did is they took Delilah and they bribed her to find out how to defeat Samson. And so three times Delilah goes to Samson and he, she's like, if you really love me, tell me what your weakness is. And three times he lies to her. First time he tells her that... If you bind me with fresh bowstrings, then he'll be weak. She does that, doesn't happen. Then she said, 
she confronts him again. And so he says, new ropes, that'll, that'll do it. And she does that, doesn't happen. Um, and then the next, and then there's another time, anyways, but the third time, he tells her the truth. And he says, if you shave my head, my strength will be gone. Because that's what God said to him before, he said to his parents before, that if you've cut Samson's hair, he will lose all his strength. And so, the Philistine men come in with Delilah. She goes and tells the Phil Philistine men that bribed her. And they come and they tie, her up, tie him up and shave his head. And then they lie in ambush for him and wait for him. So when he, he wakes up, his, his head is shaved, right? And so he goes to attack him, but he's too weak. And so they capture him and they arrest him pretty much. They gouge out his eyes, which, I mean, that does not sound fun. And then not only that, but they tied him to pillars and made him entertainment for a large gathering that they were having. I think about 3,000 people. And that was Samson's demise. His pride got in the led him to being humiliated which also led him to save Israel. Because if you read on, it says that in his humiliation, he asked God for one last bout of strength so that he could push the pillars and that the fo so that the house would collapse on top of all the Philistines, killing him and everyone else. And God granted him that. St Samson, in his humble state, still relied on God. Because he was humiliated, there wasn't really much left for him. And so, what do we learn from this story? Well, there's kind of two things that I talked about. That God does not shy away from using uh, imperfect people. Samson was not a good dude. He lived his life impulsively and didn't really care what God thought or what God's will was. And so, but God used him anyway. God used, still used him to destroy the Philistines and to do God's good work. But the power wasn't his, and the power got to his head. And so, God packed him with power that wasn't his own. And that's what we need to realize too, that our power is not our own, but it's through God that we have power. And so what I want you to learn today is don't be too proud to ask God for help. In whatever situation you're going through, just ask God for help. He's there for you. He will never leave you or forsake you. And he is loving. So just if you're in a tough spot right now, just ask him for help. That's, that's all you got to do. Or reach out to one of us leaders. We are always here for you no matter what. Reach out and we will try to help you as much as we can. Have a good day, everyone. Hope to see you on the Zoom meeting.